The national debt is repeated over and over again in the Philippines' media landscape, or even the normal conversations against Filipinos. They say that the country may go into bankruptcy with the current government spending, there's an inadequate amount of revenue being generated, and the country is taking on too much debt due to awful governance. These were raised as the key issues of the Philippine general government debt, which as of the latest data available from the Department of Finance is about 13.5 trillion pesos, including both domestic debt and foreign debt. As a percentage of GDP, it's about 63%, as the country's GDP is over 19.9 trillion pesos. Now, here's the problem with all of these inaccurate accusations about the government of the Philippines. The country is not, or even near, the point where the country will suffer a collapse due to its debt. Why? Well, we're not going to discuss that on the matter of comparing the country's debt to other countries, no. While it is true that Philippines has a low debt to GDP compared to most countries, what we must understand is what is debt. Because debt, especially at the national government level, is often exaggerated when it goes up, and little is known about its economic benefits. Yes, even debt brings in economic benefits, and that is what we're missing out on the context of the Philippine debt. People lay claim about how this debt has brought the country to a stagnating economy, yet they disregard the economic impact of using debt to favor growth. Understandably, however, before we discuss what these economic impacts are, the Philippines have once seen their economy broken down by too much debt. The Philippines during the 1980s saw its external debt balloon to extraordinary levels. There are causes for these, but understanding where we are in the current landscape is the most important factor. Debt in general is a magnificent idea. It helps the Philippines and its government, for even its corporations and business people, fund public investments. For instance, the national budget of 2023 is expected to cost a whopping 5.2 trillion pesos, but the government is only expected to make 3.6 trillion pesos from the operations. Where are they going to get the deficit of about 1.4 trillion pesos? Of course, debt. But that is entirely fine for the government to stimulate growth, invest in public infrastructure, social needs such as education or healthcare, or even help stabilize the country's crisis, and if the government were to reduce this deficit spending, or as they call it, austerity, would backfire on the country and the government. A reduced budget can imply reduced economic stimulation, reduced public infrastructure, and a lot more. If the government had catered to a balanced budget and were not aggressive over the past decade, at least since 2010 until today, there would be limited growth seen, especially in the country's infrastructure system. Yet it is due to this debt-driven growth that enabled the Philippines to build more bridges, housing, schools, and healthcare systems. But one may question, if we increase the debt too much, would that not be bad for the economy? Well, this is a very big debate among economists. How bad is too much debt? Here's what I know and what I can tell you. There are two kinds of debt, foreign and domestic. Foreign loans are taken outside, such as, say, China or Japan, domestically, when the money is borrowed internally. Foreign debt, however, often gets a bad reputation, simply because there are political risks, repayment risks, and a long list of other risks. However, what most people have still missed out on is that the Philippines currently has a substantial amount of foreign reserves, nearly $100 billion as of the time of writing. The Philippines' current total external debt is estimated to be over 106 billion US dollars, but the public sector accounts for only 60% of that foreign debt, which is 63.9 billion dollars. While it may sound big, do take note, it's not like they're going to need 63 billion dollars immediately to pay it right now. Debt often takes a longer time frame, often years to decades. But the thing is, most of the Philippines' debt is held domestically. Now that may sound incredibly massive, it is indeed massive, but there is another misconception about domestic debt. Domestic debt is what makes the largest component of the Philippines debt landscape, but it however should not be raised as a big issue. Why? Because domestic debt is far more stable than foreign debt. Economists and lawmakers argue about domestic debt a lot. But let us cut all these talks and see what the experts say. A compilation from the Cato Institute has a good sense of how many research publications have found the use of debt to be either good or bad. A study published in 2013 by researchers found that debt levels up to a ratio of 71.66% 
have a positive impact on growth. But above that, there is no statistically significant impact on growth. Another study published in 2018 with a large data set of over 134 countries between 1970 to 2012 saw that there is a positive growth driven by public debt, but eventually finds a threshold that if reached will turn negative. The report found that for developing countries, it ought to be 88%. A final study published in 2013 claimed that they have seen that higher public debts results in lower growth for lower democracy regimes, but sees a high growth for high democracy regimes. Where does the Philippines land on this study? Well, commonly, as it is, the country is still unfortunately plagued with political instability. But anyway, let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.